Hello folks. Well you know my Lotus T580 quadcopter from Nitro Planes is just my favorite quad. It's quiet and it carries the RC camera around just great. It's also a lot of fun to fly. Well several folks warned me that it was only going to be a matter of time before it would overheat and crash. But for $400 plus receiver etc what was I to do? Not fly it? Well I did fly it but I put a mod on it. Well you see in a past video I showed how to add a heat sink. This got me by for quite a while. But up at Old Ham, South Dakota, I was bummed when a burst of flame and smoke came out from under the hood and from one of the motors, causing it to immediately crash in the 100 degree weather. Well, with lights and other options, it seemed my only option was to try to find parts. But when I got my parts, I found out that the ESC didn't look exactly the same as the old one. Well here's how it went anyway with some tips and a flight test with thermal results. Let's take a look. Well like I said, you know at first glance the board looked different and there was no obvious place to solder the battery input wires on. So I guessed by noticing the big caps they have a negative symbol on them so at least I knew where to put the black wire. Put the red wire on the positive side of those caps and tried it and it worked. Okay, so now that you have seen the burned up motor and speed control, here's some pictures that should be self-explanatory of how I put the thing back together. I'll make a comment if not, and you'll see the test flights and the temperature readings. Here we go. First thing you want to do is remove the camera and battery, then unscrew the altitude and gyro board and move it to the side. Then unscrew and remove the old speed control board. I marked each set of wires when I removed them from the speed control and tied them together left, right, front and back. Then remove the bad motor by unscrewing it. It slides off and the wires will come with it. Well next install the new motor. It comes with the pins in a bag. I fed the wires through the tube first then soldered the pins on afterwards. I used a plastic pushrod tube taped to the wires to pull them through. So be careful when you pull them because the insulation can tear easily. Next screw in the new board making sure to use the plastic spacers they provided. Well now it's time to hook up the motor wires. This is the right way as shown. Okay, we're all set. Everything's turning the right way. Next, we'll remount the gyro and altitude sensor board. Okay, we're getting closer now. Let's put the hood back on. Note my air vent holes. Then put on the prop and the retainer. Okay, it's 3 a.m. Let's give it a test flight. New speed controller, V2.
very nice. Very good. Okay, let's check it in a heated flight. Okay, check the ambient temperature right here at this hole. And that says 86 degrees. We'll run it for a few minutes. Got my uh, cell spy alarm on. And a bomb. Let's see what happens. Oh, here comes the train, of course. trimmed here. The motors are much smoother than they ever were, I can tell you that. Temperature outside right now is close to 100 degrees. My voltage is reading uh, 390. All right, let's check that ambient temperature now. I'm right back where I was. And the temperature inside now is 122 degrees. If you ever saw my first video, you know that uh, it was like 150 degrees in only a couple of minutes. So uh, that's that's good because it's hot out here today. The temperature of the Earth is 116 right there. Huh. Okay. Very good. Oh, I'm glad that's working again now. Thank you.